So any other thoughts about 2023 that you'd like to share? Yes, I was talking about the uh, debt burden and how uh, interest rates are driving up the annual uh, interest charge for the government, which I believe is is forecasted to be about $53 billion annually uh, starting in, in, uh, uh, in 2025. Um, you know, that's more uh, than the projected uh, cost of our military. Um, so, uh, there, you know, you cannot borrow your way to prosperity, even when interest rates are initially low. And of course, they, they don't stay low um, if you're expanding the, the money supply. And, uh, and of course, uh, in this case, exacerbated significantly by uh, supply chain problems, which are abating, but, but still energy costs are high and, uh, and we're, we're dealing with this right. as a, a phenomenon. So the point is, there's a, there's a global problem. That's an externality. But the question is, what do we do uh, to, to uh, alleviate the problem uh, rather than exacerbate it? And right. right. My, my concern is fiscal policy is going, going the wrong way. Uh, Gary Marr, what worries you about 2023? Well, let me say this. Uh, 2022 was a VUCA environment. It was volatile. It was uh, uncertain. It was complex and it was ambiguous. I think VUCA continues into 2023. In 2022, we had you know a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, we had an energy crisis that precipitated that from that. Uh, we have um, you know issues with respect to inflation, uh, supply chain failures. 2023, uh, we're not sure what's going to happen, uh, but I think we can continue to expect that there will be volatility, there will be uncertainty, which will make it uh, very challenging for policymakers to set the right course uh you know uh this is the issue that we had with um with covid uh politicians didn't know what to do because they're not scientists uh scientists didn't know what to do because well because uh, it was so uncertain uh, nobody really knew what covid was about so there were lots of decisions that were made that in retrospect turned out to be wrong some turned out to be right uh but uh, i think 2023 we're going to see more of this kind of uncertainty and volatility, not just in Canada, but around the world. Sajid Putello, where do you land on 2023? Well, I want to be hopeful. Uh, I remember Tiff Macklin making earlier statements from the Bank of Canada that the ideal is that they're going to be headed back to a, a 2% inflation in a couple of years. Uh, so I was thinking, well, I think they better get started if they're going to get there in a couple of years with those interest rates, um, you, you know, as one of the few tools that they have to, to make an impact. Uh, people in their 50s and 60s who were buying properties when the interest rates were at two and three, uh, they're just shocked that they're at five and six now. Uh, but the guys who are 70s and 80s, they remember their purchases when um, they were gobsmacked by interest rates at 18 and 20%. So they're kind of saying, yeah, well, you haven't seen anything yet. So it's almost like our perspective based on our own experience. I think interest rates are really high. And for young people, they're going to hold back on making serious purchases, which slows the economy. Because when you buy a new house, you buy buy furniture, you buy paint, you buy supplies. And, and that, if, if you slow all that down, um, that's going to have an impact on our economy. So uh, if I had to have a wish list for next year, it's going to be that we start dragging those interest rates back down and getting people to spend their money on things that matter to their local neighborhood stores. Um, you know, we can feel, right. I, I know my own behavior is such that I start looking at, gee, how much am I spending on that? I think I'll do without that this time. And you don't want that to take root. And they say, you make a habit in three months. So I want to see some hope in three right, months so right. that we don't uh, change our habits for good. Uh, we've got 30 seconds left. I think we're going to have to have another panel in January to talk about U.S. trade relations, China. There's all this other uh, stuff that's going to have an impact on things. But Joe, are you? Uh, do you have any sense of optimism at all for next year? Oh, sure. Um, you know, the ne never sell the, the American economy uh, short for, for very long. Um, and I think uh, there, there's a resilience uh, that, uh, that we're going to see, but it's going to be uh, tough going uh, for a while. But I think we'll be feeling a lot better, I'm hoping, uh, a year from now when well, we review 2023. We will so indeed. Yes, yeah, sorry, Gary. You have, we I, have I just two seconds. To say, you know, the Canadian government issued a, an Indo-Pacific strategy during the middle of a World right. Cup game. 
Um, I mean, it, it's a it's a good strategy uh, as a as an objective. There's a lot of we don't know yet that is actually contained within the document itself. So that's something that could be very helpful uh, going forward. Put, put it on our January list for the panel. Absolutely, Gary. I appreciate it, and I wish uh, all of you a very blessed holiday season. And we'll we'll see you uh, see you again next year.